Welcome to Real Juicy News and today we are going to scan MX23 Linux OS chiefly the pre-installed LibreOffice suite will bring you the results because we noticed that near all have LibreOffice Suite pre-installed on them. MX was the only exception but now they've put it on there because we have done scans before for these different Linux operating systems with LibreOffice on it and found that it has potentially unwanted applications or pools and potential threats malware or trojans so today we are going to scan this to verify that LibreOffice does indeed come prepackaged with viruses it's not a false positive we believe it's not a false positive we are using clam tk antivirus scanner we've scanned every other directory on our computer we only found one poor or potentially unwanted application which is through an app image it was Nintendo Project 64 app image that we got from there so we got rid of that so let's scan this di particular directory we're not too sure which one so what we're going to do because we've done all of these we're up to templates okay we don't think there'll be anything there but this, the last one of the system that scans the LibreOffice etc and detects those potentially unwanted applications or pools I'm just waiting for it to start up and then it'll scan and hopefully in the next few minutes or so if it scans LibreOffice, it'll show potentially unwanted applications or pools or even possible malware, Trojan virus threats through its scan results. Again, we're just waiting for it to load up. Okay, there's no threats found there. We never know, our system might actually be clean. Okay, so we did that one, we'll scan the directory again. Uh, let's go videos. Try and move it, we can't. It's sort of stuck in one place until it actually starts, then you could possibly move it. Overall, Clam TK antivirus scanner for a Linux operating system is really good it's free it's easy to download sometimes I uh, don't think very often it comes pre-installed on your Linux OS you can download it and install it through your terminal or through a flat pack or app or something like that your package manager on MX23 it actually comes down and is installed pretty fast that's what we like about this particular OS. So far so good, we haven't had any problems with MX23. Uh, actually, we did. Uh, a certain thing that we were using actually... Oh, what was it? Uh, simple screen recorder just didn't want to function so we turned it off and uh, turn, the, turn the machine off and ran the system again and it seems to be okay and that's how we're recording this video okay, so we're going through that process we're just moving it uh, to see if we can detect any potential poo is potentially unwanted applications or virus threats through the LibreOffice suite
Clean TK anti virus is usually pretty good, pretty thorough and pretty fast, or pretty fast and pretty thorough. You can't guarantee it's going to pick up everything, but there are ways around preventing viruses inside software, uh, PDFs, etc., from infecting your computer. Use Virus Total. Uh, another one's called Jarrett's Virus Scanner, and there's a third one that we usually use before you download it. Or if you download it, then you can upload it and scan it from there because you never know. Because we have read that years ago that a virus can only be in something that's like 800 megabytes in size, right? But that's a load of rubbish. We believe it's more 8 megabytes because we found when we're using Windows XP uh, Service Pack 3 a long time ago there was a virus supposedly in the ULA or end user license agreement when you reinstall say Windows XP Service Pack 3 or Windows XP Pro or Windows XP Home there seemed to have been a virus in there so that was like really weird okay so we've done all these so where else would we be uh, actually our thing might actually be quite clean but maybe we should scan a file okay, yeah that might be it okay let's scan a file see if we can find LibreOffice suite and then scan that because we removed it from Kadachi 8.27 we got rid of that LibreOffice suite completely because we ran a scan and found potentially unwanted applications or PURS and also malware Trojan threats just waiting for it to start up we should be able to choose what file or what part of the system that we want to scan okay it's probably doing the whole system not really sure it's just going to scan all the files maybe we wanted to, uh, to scan a particular file or set of files but it's scanning the whole thing so if we have any potential threats through LibreOffice it'd be quite amazing if like it doesn't pick up anything because it'd be the first system that doesn't come prepackaged with it we believe well, that's that would be the outcome it may take a while Uh, scanning the Firefox add-ons so you could possibly find a virus or a threat contained within those from the add-ons through Mozilla Firefox or from Firefox itself it's funny how in Firefox settings you set in privacy that it doesn't remember your history but every time you go back and you have a look at your history of what you've been looking at online it's all there all these history blockers history removers even if they're on a timer they don't seem to work that great so you set it to you set your privacy settings to for Firefox to never remember your history right but when you go back it's changed to customize okay and you change it back to never remember the history because when you first go into those settings you set it to never remember the history 
it'll say, well, you, in order for this to work, you need to shut down Firefox, you need to restart it, right? So you do that, you go back, and it's going to customize. You're like, what the heck? So you set it to never remember history, you shut it down, you go back, later on, and it's changed back to customize. Okay. So it's really annoying. So maybe they need to fix their Firefox. Okay, don't put it out there, this opportunity or this option never to remember your history and keep switching back okay. it's probably designed like that so they can track you or whatever okay so they can look at your history so what we do in the privacy part of it is we cancel all the uh, allow Firefox to run uh, studies on your system right and all this sort of stuff we, we cut all those out but that's the only one we couldn't put a stop to it keeps switching over so we have all these history blockers and removers and all that sort of stuff end up having to do it manually even if it's on a timer right the only time it really disappears is when you shut the browser down but if you don't have a sorted history it's not really that much to worry about sure they're going to track you you're going to follow you around the internet all that sort of stuff gather your information store it up whatever maybe possibly use it against you at some future time you know or the conspiracy theory type thing but if you're not looking at anything sorted or disgusting or whatever what have they got on you oh I use Firefox oh Okay, it's going to scan 240 files so it's basically going through what we've already scanned and found that there's nothing there no pools or malware threats so it's scanning all the files on the system so it may take a while and scanning what we've already scanned The MX23 is, is quite a good system. It's quite light on resources, we feel. Every system has its moments where it decides to freeze up on you. Kadachi was the worst in that sense. When we got rid of the conky, it would like shut us down. We'd go back on, go to the internet, it would shut us down. You had to put the password in to go back to the system. Stuff like that. But other than that, it was actually quite a good protection and security operating system. But we just felt we didn't really need the VPN, we didn't really need the Tor. Uh, we could get our highest score, of, a security protection score up to 82 at the most. But when you're online, go to YouTube or something like that, sometimes it'll ask you, verify that you're actually you. And then you have to do that capture and all that sort of stuff and sometimes it's all good you feel safe and secure but sometimes it's quite annoying before the guy that owns it uh, Kadachi used to monitor you I guess that if you went to sorted websites and stuff or download something illegal your free VPN service etc would be cut off and then this notice in red will be flashing along your screen all day every day which could be quite annoying so you have to like shut it down put on another operating system wait for about a week and then reinstall it through USB to your hard drive and then you'll be alright because that was the prerequisite of using Kadachi this was like Kadachi ooh, 18 or something like that or maybe before that and it was good too because you could update it from your machine but then you decide to change it and you have to download it now but he hasn't created a new Kadachi Linux OS with an updated Firefox that's why we put MX23 on instead because it had 
Firefox, well, we believe to be 125, but it was actually 119, so because it wouldn't allow us to use or go into our, our YouTube studio to check our stats or anything like that, unless we had an updated, more updated uh, Firefox. We we're on 113, so I thought, well, that's a problem. He's not updating it, so we'll have to get rid of it and find something else with the latest Firefox on it. It'd be good if they had a Firefox so you didn't have to update, you know? Every six months or something like that. Self-repairing, that would be great. Okay, it's scanning through everything so it could be quite a while before it finishes and shows the result. Okay, we got a comment on one of our other channels saying that we couldn't take constructive criticism or that sort of stuff. But the person didn't state specifically what they were getting at. So he asked them because it was a, it was just a basically a app image for a breathing technique. What has this got to do with that? So people really need to if they got a, something like that to say to us, tell us exactly what it is. Okay, it's probably to do with where certain people originated from or something like that. We're not really sure, but it was something trivial. People make statements, we do the research, we find the sources. We can't be right all the time because if you get information from the so-called experts or somebody that's qualified, has the initials after their name, etc., their noun, they're popular, they're well-respected because they're experts. People come at us with, oh, you said this, you said that. No, no, the, the expert said that. We're just providing the information from that so-called expert. Here's the links, here's the sources, where are yours? In your statement, right? They never provide it. So you can't always have perfect information because they could be right 90% of the time with the information, but 10% could be off the top of their head or they've had their own flavor or they've twisted it, etc., etc. Now we are only the ones that find that information and provide it. And then someone comes at us with something and then we say, well, okay, let's give us a link to that, as to your sources. And if they do, well, we go check it out. Okay. And then if they are right, we say, oh, yeah, okay, you're right. Okay, we explain to them, well, you know, we got this from the experts, and it's obviously wrong. Yeah. Everything's always wrong, right? Because it's open to being debunked uh, through debates and all that sort of stuff. One will say, oh, no, nah, nah, that's not right, because... Another one will say to, about that one, no, that's not right because, and another one will say, no, that's not right because. So you got people debunking it all the time, okay? the so-called experts. So you can never guarantee that your information that you're getting is 100% on the dot. Okay, That's why we say we try to find, when people make claims or claim facts, we try to establish them, we try to find out if they're established facts, like for three different people, right? that don't live in the same time period. You can't have three Romans telling you the similar story because they're Romans, right, and they may have lived in the same age. So they may have met, sat in the same room and talked about it, and one might have influenced the other two. Oh, drop your ideologies or your thoughts or whatever and embrace mine because I'm the man, right? So they do that. So you're looking at, it's better to use someone, say, a Roman from say 
the messianic period you know the times of Jesus whatever if it's related to that right and then use another person from a different era say 500 years or a thousand years later or whatever that's talking about the same thing and then somebody else probably today someone who's knowledgeable and experts so you've got three different people agreeing saying and agreeing on the same thing the same subject right so it synchronizes so both the, the three of them are in agreement okay so that establishes that fact fact and then to back that up you need to find the evidence that proves itself evident okay and then you need to f find out or find a way to prove that that scribe that author that writer of that information is actually infallible okay so then his writings etc will be then deemed infallible irrefutable okay you can't stop it from being debunked because people would debunk anything they'll, de they'll debunk chicken soup right because they can chicken soup is not chicken soup it's really tomato soup you know it just looks like chicken yeah? it's that kind of stuff there will always be someone who will try to debunk something and they want to argue with you undermine you etc etc and then once you expose them through the sources and you provide the links they get all upset it's a cognitive problem yeah it's your wiring it's the way you're being programmed because you don't like to be exposed okay you think you know the truth or you have the truth so that's the truth to you anyone that says any different well you know you, you attack them especially because oh damn he's exposed my belief or my truth as incorrect or false a total lie oh so they've got to retort they've got to come back at you snap back at you and they'll make up all this stuff about you right that you're this that you're that you said this you said that when it's not actually you it's the information right yeah they'll, they'll try to prod you and try and catch you out try and trip you up and then as soon as they you, you might put the wrong word in. oh look you didn't spell it properly you're a retard that sort of thing right anything to win the argument yeah and then maybe other people around them will think oh yeah he's a guy we can troll or hassle we'll jump in on it right so you got 10 or 20 people coming at you right and they're saying this is stuff to you and it's like guy be careful what you say because your photo is there we live in the same country and if I come across you on the street right you don't know me and you should get this knock in the nose and you wonder why yeah it's karmic it's consequence etc but not that we go around punching you in the nose we just probably just laugh at you and you probably wonder what the yeah we walk past you and say hey whatever your nickname is on a social chat thing they go, how do you know me yeah like this other person this silly guy he's putting all his plants his weed plants up on display right his photos he's got his face next to it what's to stop somebody snooping or somebody watching in a social chat so if police go in there or whatever and they're trying to catch these dirty guys right and then they come across this guy with all these plants puts all his plants him token up and it's got his face there and they look through their you know do their research or whatever they find out where this guy lives and he's busted right because he was an idiot and put all his she was boasting he was showing off right about his plants that he had at his house and next when he gets busted and he wonders why not because the people in the social chats are not on him but you know maybe uh yeah there's this maybe there was a snitch on there whatever that knows this guy right oh he didn't give me money I asked him for money last week and he wouldn't leave me and say so I'm going to snitch on him drop a minute right and he went away get busted like there's even a service online especially in America where you can report that sort of stuff but what's the point when they don't do anything right <laughs> just go oh yeah we'll look into it and they never do it's like looking in a hole in the road yeah we're looking into it and that's about it you know 
Okay, so sort of slow the scanning thing, so it might be a while. Okay. Just have all these examples here. Interesting topics we're looking at. Very interesting. We found years ago when we were still using 98 XP Pro Service Pack 3, uh, we had a lot of problems when we reformatted re the hard drive, put the system on there, uh, set it up, downloaded all this protection and security for it, you know, so stop viruses and all that sort of stuff. And then suddenly we get a blue screen, blue screen of death or something like that, or it just freeze up. It just gave us headaches. And we wondered why, so we kept trying and trying and trying. And then we decided we'll go to this certain website, download everything, all their freeware, some of their shareware because you need you needed a key or a license key to actually run that program, right? So we could use it. And then we basically scanned the whole lot, the whole uh, each software that we're downloading through uh, three free scanners online uh, and found that they were full of potentially unwanted applications, Trojans, uh, spyware, malware, and all these different f forms of viruses. The whole website. Right, all that software that we downloaded was all infected, so that's why we kept getting infections on our computer, right? Because it's a .exe or .bat file means .exe means it's executable. So when you click on it, it opens it, which just releases that virus and infects your machine. Or the batch file .bat or batch file, when you run that, your machine gets covered in viruses. So we're like, what the hell? This whole website, everything we downloaded from there, all this freeware, etc., is just totally virus. Yeah, it's all infected with these viruses. We thought, well, maybe there's the chance that it's a false positive. Okay, but we're using three different uh, scanners online, right? As we download these software. Protection and safety or protection and security software for Windows XP Service Pack 3, or whatever we're using at the time, right? That's like shocking. Uh -huh. And then we found out that on your Windows 98, any Windows system, there's these small pockets because there's this uh, software we found called uh, Index Dot Analyzer, something along those lines. And you run a scan and it would show up all these cookies that are on your machine. Basically cookies are records of websites that you visited, etc, etc. So we read up on that and we found, yeah, there's a certain pocket on your machine where Microsoft, etc. can come through a back door and look at that, the index.dat files, and gather a history of what you've been looking at for whatever reason you're doing it. Another guy, supposedly expert working for Microsoft, said there's a Huffman floor, or Huffman floor, that no matter how much you protect your computer, you can protect it with everything, right? You're still going to get, they've still got access through a backdoor to look at your machine anytime. Okay. And then another one of late that we found supposedly to do with the CIA is that on your system, they can, these things there, that they can just get into your system anytime they want to check you up. Okay. Uh, there, there was something about the CIA saying the communist countries do this, do that, Russia does this, uh, like MK Ultra, all that sort of stuff, right? But apparently the Russians says, no, it's a load of rubbish. We don't need to use that sort of stuff. Okay, all that mind control stuff. We just put you in a room where we question you, leave you there for a couple of days, 
you're starving, you're thirsty, and we taught you and all that sort of stuff, and you leave you there for a few more days, you're on a point of starvation, and then we get the information out of you. Yeah? Because you, you think, well, I'm so damn hungry and so damn thirsty. You know, I'll tell you, give me some food, right? You know? You, they broke you. They don't need that sort of crap. So it was all like a load of rubbish trying to get you the American people on their side oh those are reds under your bed all that sort of stuff right yeah and just like for that other country okay? it was all like hidden motive agenda to get the people on their side to get the people saying oh yeah Russia this Russia that China this China that that sort of thing yeah it's very really interesting but then again, someone would debunk it and say, oh, that's not true, all this stuff. They've never even looked at it, and yet they know, oh, that's not true. Yeah. Like people say to us, oh, I'm an expert in this and that and this and that. It's like, well, look at this information. It proves that you aren't. Your information is actually wrong. And they say, oh, but I'm an expert in all this sort of stuff. You know, like you're, you've learnt it at university or you learnt it at a course or you got a course online or something you paid for it whatever and you've learned it that way someone's taught you that yeah oh but I'm, I know linguistics and I know this and I know that well obviously you don't <laughs> do you know the original ancient very old languages that are long dead no longer written no longer spoken no you don't so you've probably just got a modern form of linguistics okay your linguistics might be a modern rendering of a modern or neo yeah modern modernized vernacular like Israeli Hebrew or Latinized form of Greek or something like that you know it's not the ancient really uh, the, not the original ancient very old long dead ancient languages like the Tav Asherit or the Tav Ivri which is the uh, Aramaic and the Hebrew or anything like that it's today's modern version because those languages are long dead no longer written no longer spoken there might be a few people out there that old people that still know those kind of languages they can still speak them but it's very rare and them only knowing that language and not knowing English they can't translate it for you <laughs> into English okay so they others that speak the modern dialect of that language they use their liturgy say in the churches etc uh, because their people understand it that modern vernacular of it right say, say if you have the Syriac or modern Galilean Aramaic they understand that so they're reading this old because the root words are basically the same so they're basically reading that liturgy through that modern language or vernacular exclusive t exclusively to those people that actually speak that modern language native borns not ones that have gone and done a $500 course online and then think that they're more expert than a native born Aramaic or Hebrew speaker right these guys these are guys that are native born Aramaic or Hebrew speakers okay they've got about 30 years experience and then some young upstart that did a course for 9 months thinks he's more expert than that person that's a native born Aramaic or Hebrew speaker go for you it's like saying to a grand master of a martial art you're a white belt and say oh I could kick your ass <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous right and telling them all about how they can do that. Yeah, this guy's been doing his martial art for 30 years, and a young guy, a white belt, <laughs> who's no experience at all, tells him, Oh, this is how you do it, and all this sort of stuff. It's like a guy that we knew, he worked on a farm with him, and he was told to drench these sheep. It's like he got this anti worming liquid in this backpack. You got to put it up a certain way so it flows and runs through, right? And you put it in the sheep's mouth, and that'll kill the worms, etc., inside their tummies, 
right? Because you don't want them infecting the others, all that sort of stuff, all this agricultural stuff. He put the pack upside down and he wormed all these sheep. <laughs> the way he, because the pack's upside down, it makes it harder for it to come out the nozzle. So the farmer came and he says, did you gents all these sheep? He said, yeah. He says, well, that's amazing. You had your backpack on like that? Go, yeah, yeah, it gets the whole 300 or more. He says, wow, that's amazing. You're an amazing guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why is that? I asked. And he says, because you've got the pack upside down. That's got to be the hardest way to drench ever, but you did it. It's like, and then this guy's telling the farmer, he's had like, he's like probably about 60 or 70, he had about 40, 30 to 40 years experience on a farm. <laughs> How to run a farm? <laughs> this guy here has no qualifications at all. At all, he's on a work scheme, you know, being placed there to help the farmer get paid or you know whatever. He's telling him, "This is how you should run your farm. This is how you should treat your cattle. This is how you should etc. etc." This guy's like, "What?" Some people. Okay, so it hasn't found anything yet. It's 13, 10, 1310 files, it hasn't found anything yet. So we're hoping that's going to go through to Libra office and then pick up if there's any poors or potentially unwanted applications or viruses, virus threats on that or through that pre installed Libra office sweet application we're hoping it does that because this is basically the last option but we'll be really pleased if we find nothing this will be the first system Linux operating system that has Libra Office Suite and there's no viruses pre-installed in it see how it's got script.exe that's executional files, executable files. So when you click on that, it'll run. And if there's a virus already pre-installed in it, it'll infect your computer. This being Linux probably won't have batch files, or if they do, it'll be similar, but probably under a different name. Okay, it's going through everything. So... Hopefully this one is going to go and pick up the LibreOffice suite. It's pre-installed. Yeah, so we've spent since what 2010, 2012 maybe looking at those old systems. They're no longer supported. Windows 95, 98, XP, XP Pro. XP Home, uh, Windows 2000, 2000 Pro. We've looked at all of those and tried to best secure, particularly secure them with all the available freeware, etc. But there's no way you can because hackers, crackers, whatever, they always find a way in, a back door, reverse engineering, etc. etc. They always find a way to get in there. And a lot of ways is through the software that you download and install or a PDF or an image or an icon or something like that right they've infected it and they've designed it so that your popular antivirus won't detect it okay it'll pass over it whereas another one will detect it and then the next one probably won't, or maybe we'll detect it as well. That's why we use Virus Total, Jared's Malware Scanner, uh, and another one. We can't remember the name of that one. But if one misses it, then the other two might pick it up. Or if two miss it, that last one might pick it up. See? People will say, oh, that could be a false positive. Yeah, there's always that chance. It's a false positive. But if three pick it up, well three different scanning software is that a false positive
we did have a set when we were using those Microsoft systems. It scanned, but then uh, supposedly that e set was infected anyway, so yeah. Okay, so it's run through everything and it's about to stop. So we may have to go and see if we can choose a specific, uh, if there's a way we can just choose one specific file, i.e. leave it off a suite and scan that. Because we don't think it's going to pick up on it. It's basically scanning what we've already scanned and found that no threats, alright? Sometimes it makes you wonder why does Microsoft create a new system like Windows 10 and it's just full of bugs, it's full of viruses, it's crap, it doesn't work properly. Right? And then you have to go maybe buy other software to repair that and all this sort of stuff. It's all money making, isn't it? It's all pre planned probably. You get more money out of you. You buy this into the system that you think is. They're telling you, oh, it's great, it's the latest system, it's fantastic, all this sort of stuff, and then you find it's a load of crap. Yeah. Then they bring up this new one, which is half pie, half done, and they say, oh, it's fantastic, it's the best ever, and all this, and you buy into it, you go and buy it, and you run it, and it's crap. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame, it's a legal shame, isn't it? Because I've had 20 or 30 years to fix all the vulnerabilities and all this sort of stuff. Like they had 20 or 30 years to create virtual reality. They always had it in the, in the back of their minds, I think. But with these vulnerabilities, they never ever bothered. Oh, we'll get around to it one day. But that's why you still have uh, problems, right? These vulnerabilities. That's why you got to run a hotfix update and vulnerability update, all this sort of stuff, right? I'm not too sure about 10 or 11 now, if, if it's Windows 11 or Microsoft Edge or whatever. But yeah, it's not a great system. That's why a lot of people, I guess, go to Linux. It's easier to install. You can run it from a USB stick. You can run, you can test it, and you can decide, yep, yeah, okay, you can you put it on your machine. And it's light on resources, and you don't have these massive hidden infections and stuff right you might get the odd one but that's because you're downloading something from a website a pdf or a image or some sort of software and unbeknown to you it's got this poor or this virus pre-installed in it okay it's nearly finished so we might have to do a single scan on that LibreOffice because we don't think it's picked up on that it's not cleaning, it's not checking that, so. Okay, there's no threats whatsoever on our machine. Through so these scans, are going to close this, and we're going to scan a. Hopefully, it'll allow us to scan a certain file. Uh, where can we go? No, it's not going to let us do it individually. Okay, let's go. Oh, this might be it here. Other, other locations. We'll try that. Eh? Okay, we'll put this password. We're not too sure if this is going to work. We're going to have a try. Okay, it's saying. It's the wrong password. We're pretty sure it isn't. Okay, 
seeing again we can't access it because it's encrypted oh okay yeah we, it probably is the wrong password that's probably right no it's not allowing us to do that even though we when we installed it we asked for a password um, go forget password immediately paraphrases needed to access encrypted data ok so when we installed MEX23 it asked us for a encryption password so we're going to put that one in and it may not allow it nope so we're going to try this other one but we believe that was the password But yeah, it, we'll try this one, eh? Computer, we'll try that one. Is this, is this Libra? Looks like Libra there. Yeah, Libra 64. So it could be these two here. So we're going to run that, see what it does. This may be the first time that we can't actually get it to scan. Libre office as we wanted it to whereas the other systems like Hadati etc the other Linux systems we could do that so he's hoping that look that lib64 etc looked like it was Libre office sweet for x186 64 so we're pretty sure it's that file with that sweet okay no threats it's cleaning up so we may have to go and look at that again and click on that particular file scan a file okay where are we where are we was it home Locations, computer, okay, let's go here, not too sure, but we'll have a look, see what it says, see what it does, if it comes up with just one file, well, it can't be LibreOffice. searching for it no I don't think it's that no I don't think so maybe we have to look within the system itself because it's not doing it for us ok let's have a look Computer Libra sixty four. Do we just look at that one? Not too sure. We don't think that's actually it, so damn it. Get back here. Not too sure on this one. Maybe we can see scan a directory. Uh, quarantine, what's in there? Nothing. Back. Okay, so look. Uh, we 
you would it be? not be able to find it and do it so have a look see if we can find it okay wrong wrong way uh what's the office okay he's office here don't know if not too sure you can like hide those Libra Office if you find an infection you may be able to get rid of it as well off your system and it shouldn't really affect your system right so it's all these that are possibly infected okay if it's pre-installed it's got the pre uh, these viruses pre-installed with it okay we haven't found anything so we may have to get back to you on this when we actually wake up and find out where it actually is um this is history here's the history okay here you go here's a potentially unwanted windows packer spec 38 that's probably the name of that threat okay it was an app image we got from uh app image dot hub this is to play Nintendo games project 64 you just uh, put it on your desktop you get you set the permissions for it to run and then you better play these Nintendo games it was actually quite good but now that we scanned it we found that it, this is what it possibly had in it so the person that created and uploaded it had pre-infected it right so these are evidence there So we're not too sure. So we have to leave this video. I have to end this video. And if you liked it, if you found it very interesting, even our rank very, very interesting, then subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Add your comments below. And we'll get back to you on those as soon as we can because we're always interested in your comments and your views and opinions, etc. And you go share this video with all your family, friends, and others, warning them that maybe. If you have LibreOffice pre-installed on a Linux operating system that you've just downloaded, put to a USB stick, and uh, testing, and then you decide, oh, I like this, I'll put this on my machine. On my machine, this is something you've got to be aware of. Wonder why you might have problems with your machine. It starts freezing, it starts playing up because there's these hidden poors or potentially unwanted applications or even malware virus threats. Uh, in the software that you've recently downloaded and you have no idea about it.